Follow American Hostage on Amazon Music to binge all eight episodes right now. American Hostage is an Amazon original and criminal content production. Listener discretion is advised. Episode 3, The Lion's Den. We understand now that this could go for quite some time. Caritzis reportedly has four days' supply of food in his apartment. We don't know what that means for National news and local news, two very different beasts with two very different faces. If you want to go national, you've got to sensationalize. Now, that just wasn't my thing. However, when you're stuck in the grind doing local news for 25 years, you start looking in places you shouldn't. You start getting reckless. I mean, who am I kidding? I wanted to be a name you'd never forget. And so did Tony Karitzis. Okay, next to kid. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? You're about to enter a building wired with bombs. We need to know who to contact in case you don't make it out. Oh, oh, um, my, my mother, um... 555-4389. Got it. And your name again? Er- Erica Potter. I am with the city, sir. Brad. Go ahead, Begley. The bomb squad is tucked in the back. All right, give me a second. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the, bomb, the bomb squad? Is that what he said? Yeah. Now, Karitzis has already talked to four city lawyers today. Uh-huh. He kicked all of them out. What makes you think you'll get a different response? Uh, well, uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm the last one left. All right, here's the situation. The building is secured on all sides. There are most likely explosives on the northwest corner. But the bomb squad is scouring all four main points. There's a SWAT team tucked in the back and sides, and there are multiple snipers aiming at every floor. To be clear, the building you're about to enter is a war zone, and you have signed away your rights in the off chance anything happens to you. Do you understand the situation, Miss Potter? Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, I hear you. Uh, just that n- nobody nobody said anything about a bomb, so we um, don't have any visual on it. Could just be a bluff. Uh huh. So, but how confident are you that it's a bluff? Now, here's your badge. Okay. Take a right up those stairs, three flights. You'll hit Officer Begley, and he'll take you to the door. We're gonna give you a walkie-talkie, and if okay. you feel like things are going sideways, you hit me up, and we'll push in. Uh, right. <clears throat> right. Yeah. All right. I got Erica Potter coming up, newest city lawyer. I'll get her. Good luck, Potter. Thank you. Oh, and Potter. Yeah? Anything you say can get a man's head blown off. Any wrong move in the building can blow. So, you know, try not to get us all killed. Oh, thank you. That's a, that's a good tip. Thank you. You miss Potter? Yeah. It's me. All right. Just come up this way. Follow me. Okay. Keep it cool best you can. Uh-huh. The last lawyer was trying to get his demands, so just start there. And also, I do not recommend any chit-chat. Okay? Just get right to it. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Good luck. And he went on down to market to Pennsylvania and found the Pennsylvania, the Washington State, and Western Washington State. And then when we got to uh, Pennsylvania, he jumped in a police car with these hostages and went to his This is his uh, note to me here says this is plan B. Plan A was to kill four officials. He says he has been planning this for four years, according to my information here. Hall's wife is uh, now in a hospital after surgery. Uh, the nature of that we don't know. Okay, Tony, Mr. Tony Karitsis, uh, I need to write down everything you want so I can take it back downtown to Bob Farrell. I don't even know who the fuck I'm talking to. Who is this? Uh, my name is Erica Potter. I'm a deputy prosecutor for Marion County. Oh, we got us a bona fide female here, don't we? They're pulling out all the stops now. Okay, huh? Mr. Mr. Kritzis, I'm here to report on your conditions. You sound like you still sport pigtails, honey. How old are you? I'm 
I'm 28, Tony. Uh-huh. Well, now I know what they're thinking. They're thinking they get a female in here and suddenly I'm all a shudder, but baby doll, that ain't happening. And you're off your goddamn rocker if you think this changes a single goddamn thing. I'm mad as hell and I dodged the wiles of women this far and I ain't stopping now. Tony, you hear me? Tony, it's not a trick. I can assure you that I am perfectly equipped to handle these negotiations, and if you- And how many goddamn lawyers this fucking city got? Where are the other 15 I've been talking to? They were pulled off. We we didn't want to make it seem like we were ganging up on you. Uh I'll be your liaison to the prosecutor's office, so anything you need will go through me from now on. Where's my lawyer? This feels like a goddamn infringement on my rights to talk without my lawyer. Okay, he's on his way, and if you'd like to wait for him, we can do that. I just want to be able to get you anything you need in the meantime. Uh Uh-huh. So they made a female the head honcho lawyer, huh? No, no, that. That would be Bob Farrell. He sent me down here to negotiate terms with you. Well, why ain't Bob Farrell down here himself then, Miss Potter, if he's the one who's calling the shots? Oh, he, he's got another case that needs his immediate attention. What, there's another fella out there sticking guns in people's faces that I don't know about? No, Tony, I that's... just picked a busy day for y'all, huh? I can't even be the story of the week. Tony, I can assure you that you have our complete and undivided attention. Why'd you become a lawyer, Potter? I want to help people. No, 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 no. Don't give me that bullshit, honey. That shit from a prosecutor. You're a finger wagger. When's the last time you sent a real bad guy to jail? I... I mean a real bad fella, Potter. A real snot-nosed cheat who swindles millions because there's a hell of a lot of those fucks out there. Um, I prosecuted Cole Markey last year. Who's that? He's the guy who dropped that kid down the well. All right. He counts. Tony, I requested this job myself because I wanted to talk to you, sir. I think I'm the right person to get you what you need. I find your story very sympathizing. Oh, don't dip my and dick in tar and call it a blowjob, honey. There's that trick again. There's that femaleism, if I ever heard it. Trying to butter me up, so what? You can Tony, take... but the kid's trying to help give you what you want. You shut the mm. fuck up, Dick. Tony! You all give me a minute. I gotta domesticate my friend Dick here. Ah! Tony! Tony! Ah. Hey, what, what's going on? I love talking to you, Dick, but you wait until you're prompted. You hear me? Tony? Yeah. What, what's going on? You give me a minute. Is Mr. Hall okay? You all act like Dick can't wear a bruise. Dick's just fine. I'm fine. I'm all right. Okay. Now you listen to me, Miss Potter. You listening? Yes, sir. Three things, motherfucker. Three things. You got a little pen and paper? Uh, yeah, I got him, Tony. Number one, I want an apology de facto from Meridian Mortgage and the Esther House Corporation that exercises me from all admonishment from here thenceforth until until uh, all services are rendered. Okay, uh, yeah, could could you just repeat that, Tony? What, what, what are you, stupid? Are you a fucking lawyer or not? Yes, I am. Do I you just... speak a legalese or not? Do you speak your own damn language? Okay, so your first demand is that you want an apology from Esther House and... What I assume is is you want them to say that you never did anything wrong. I want them to say they cheated me. They cheated me. And the whole goddamn world needs to know it. Okay. Okay, Tony. Number two. You, you get number one down? Yeah, I got it. Number two. I want the $130,000 of the hall say I owe them wiped out. I want that gone. They fucked my plans to get that money early and I'm not dealing with it anymore. Okay, Tony. And I want $5 million. Five million dollars. Because I worked like a dog my entire life, honey. And I never, ever had one greedy breath. And now I feel like being greedy with how I've been raped the way I have. So I want five million dollars for my troubles. Okay, and that's number three? No, that's part of number two. Are, are, are you stupid? Are you that big a moron? No, sir, I just want to be clear. God, I can't stand you people. Number three, I want ironclad immunity. I'm walking out of here, and I'm going home, and I'm putting on my pajamas, and I'm sleeping for a week straight. And there's not a goddamn pig who's going to get in my way or or, or stop me. Okay, so immunity. That's right. No charges. I'm going to be able to walk down the street and sign autographs when this is over and done. And no psychological evaluations. You hear me? None whatsoever. All right, all right. Hang on, Tony. Tony, hang on. I I can hear you fine. It's okay. I know you're all out there thinking I'm crazy and I'm out of my mind. And I'm not. I am of sound mind and I am stable. Okay. Okay, Tony. I've got it. All right. Uh, is that all? That's it. Now, 
I don't want to hear another word from any of you. Any of you. I'm done, and when I want to talk, I'll talk. So you get the hell away from my door. Uh, okay, Tony. You get the hell away! Point of view, we can turn around and look to the southeast. And there is a sniper rifle up on the third floor, propped in a window with a clear view of the of the apartment. Uh, it's certainly not clandestine in any way. All the fellow would have to do is look out and out the window in the direction of the apartment. Uh, <clears throat> Father God, give them peace. And let them know you are with oh, them. Shut up, Dick. What are you praying for? Well, that's about all I have, Tony. What do you pray for, Dick? My wife. My kids. What, you forgot about yourself? How would this happen if you pray so hard? I don't know. Yeah, that's my problem with religion, Dick. I don't know. Covers too much acreage. I've been praying for you, too. Oh, yeah? What for? Well, that should do the right thing. Motherfucker, I am doing the right thing. This is goddamn justice. You understand me? Look at me, dick. That's something the Bible is all about, isn't it? Justice. And if you're praying that I do the right thing, you might as well be praying I blow your head in half. Tony, I want to settle this as much as you Oh, do. I know you do. You didn't die a shotgun to the back of my head, but you sure put a noose around me, pal. You've been squeezing the life out of me for four years. Four years I've been gagging for four, four years. We gave years. you the loan. I know you gave and, me the loan. And two extensions. You stop telling me what you did for me. I came to you with a plan to develop the best land in the city. I had offers, and you know I had offers. I don't want to make you mad. Well, we're damn past that now, aren't we, pal? I'm saying I want to have this conversation with you, Tony. And I, I, I want to have it man to man. Which is the way it should be had, but... You've got me handcuffed with a gun to my head. And I don't feel like I can speak my mind. Because you're scaring me, Tony. And I know you want to. And you've succeeded. But if you want to have this conversation like men, you've got to bring me to your level. Yeah. I think that's fine. Turn around. <clears throat> Sorry, you got jinnied. Now, Dick, you don't do anything fucking stupid. Because you yell or you move and this whole building goes up. You hear me? I hear you, Tony. Now, Dick, give me your best bullshit. <clears throat> Last year, after that second extension... You came in with that offer from the jewel company. No, oh, I fucking remember. And I remember Dad was excited for you. Because they had offered you some real money on that land. And I remember you were excited, too. I was excited! You bet your ass. They were going to give me $500,000 for that, and I'd barely developed yet. Why didn't you take it? Because it didn't feel right. And I knew, I fucking knew, there were going to be better offers. And you knew, too. And that's why you and your fucking family went behind my back and started showing the land to other clients without me knowing who... We did what now? Don't you give me that, you son of a bitch. Tony, I genuinely have no idea what you're talking about. You and your daddy were taking meetings behind my back, talking about my land, the land I took a loan out on, and the land I broke my back to develop. We didn't do that. That's You're not... a liar! You're a fucking liar! You tried to steal them away from me! You tried to steal Tony, my buyers! listen, you're scaring me again, but I'm gonna hold firm that we didn't do what you're saying. Now, we had to foreclose because you weren't you selling... You wanna know what, what you did, Dick? You ruined my goddamn life! And I had such a little one to ruin. You were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, and I was forced to build a house with a rusty one as a shovel. I didn't have a wife. I didn't have kids. I had hands shaved down to the bone from all the work I did to make my dreams come true. And you had to take it away from me. You had to look. Look what you made me do. Tony. Oh, fuck you. Tony. Fuck you. Damn. Um, let's, let's talk. I let you talk and I let you speak your mind and I'm a perfect goddamn gentleman. A perfect gentleman. Now you turn around or I'll bash your nose right through your skull. That's tight, Tony. <clears throat> Could you at least loosen the handcuffs a notch? My wrists are swollen. Let me see. Hmm. Well, shit, that looks bad. Just one notch less would help. I would, pal, but I don't have a key. You want some ice for him? Sure. Thanks. It's 
Tony. What? Do you really want to kill me? You made it so I have to want it, Dick. Here. be shot, the fall of his body would pull the trigger on the shotgun and kill the hostage. It is because of that kind of pre-thinking that the posture here is one of great care. Hello? Tony, it's Fred. Yes, sir, Mr. Heckman. How are you? Well, I'm doing all right, Tony. You got news for me about that interview? Yes. Yes, sir, I do. We are... we're good to go over here. Oh, man. That's good news. That is good news, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Heckman. Well, yeah, now, Tony, I also got to thinking that you were right when you were talking about the 11 o'clock slot. Now, that's, that's too late, and your story deserves as much coverage as it can get. You're absolutely goddamn right. Part, pardon my language. Now, it's almost 9 o'clock now. Yes, sir, but the whole world's watching. I heard a chopper outside just an hour ago. Well, what we'd love is if you could come down to the station and talk with us after you release Mr. Hall, and we'll let you talk for as long as you'd like. I mean, they don't even let me talk that long. Tony? Tony, what, what do you say? I didn't know you thought of me as such a huge fucking idiot, Mr. Hank. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang, hang on there now, Tony. Are you hang working on with them now? Are you working with them? Is that it? You're working with these pigs? These Tony? fucks? Yep. Tony, it was just an idea. Now you listen here, Mr. Heckman. Now, I respect you, and I respect your situation. I've listened to you for nearly 20 years, and I've told people to listen to you because I thought you respected your listeners. I, I, thought, I do. T Tony, And now, I do. you're going against me, and you're going against the people, the common people, the common man, to work with these pigs? You have them in the room with you right now? No, it's just you and me, Tony. Where did Leo Malone go? He talked my ear off for hours and then just disappeared. Is he with you? Uh, he He's not here. There's nobody named Lenny Malone here, Leo Tony. Malone, Mr. Eckman. I said Leo Malone. He, he He's not here, Now you Tony. listen to me right now. I'm giving you the night off. You hear me? Because I agree with you about the 11 o'clock time slot being bullshit. It is bullshit. So tomorrow, we're going to do this thing for real. Do you understand? We're going to do this interview live at noon. Noon! Do you hear me? When everybody's listening. I hear you, You're Tony. not putting this shit off anymore. No more. I'm... I'm hearing everything you're saying, well, I'm Tony. tired of you procrastinating, Mr. Hickman, because you'd never get me closer to putting two slugs in Dick Hall's head when I catch you procrastinating. I understand you, Tony. I understand. Now, you apologize to me so we can get back on track to being friends. Because I... I don't like screaming at you, Mr. Heckman. I don't like it one bit. You're a man I respect, and I prefer having respect for you rather than anger. Well, I am sorry about all that, Tony. Hey, all right. All right. Hey, hey, we're back on track, baby. Now, Tony, I'd like to ask you a favor. Yeah, yeah I bet you would. See, I did what Dick asked me to do, and I called his wife Shelby. Now, she is scared out of her mind, Tony. She's been watching the TV all day, and she's practically catatonic with fear. That'd say anyone in her position would be. Well, now, I told her that I would ask you if it would be okay for Dick to call his wife and talk to her for just a minute. You did what now? Now, I didn't say you would let him. Now, I know you're, you're calling the shots, Tony. I just told her that I would ask. And that I believed you were a fair man, but I didn't say you would let him. But what do you think, Tony? Do you think you'd let him do that? As a personal favor to me. I'm just thinking about how much my wife would need to hear from me. Your wife whose anniversary you're missing? Yes. The very same one. Well, I don't want anyone thinking I'm cruel. 
Nobody thinks you're cruel, Tony. I'll do it. I'll do it for you, Mr. Heckman, because you're a hell of a man. You can call me Fred, Tony. Yes, sir, Mr. Fred. <laughs> look, look at that. You got me all flustered. <laughs> yes, sir, <laughs> uh, Mr. Fred. Okay, tomorrow at noon. The offer only stands so long as Dick Hall is alive, Tony. Uh-huh, I hear you. We'll talk tomorrow. You take care of yourself and him. Good night, Mr. Fred. Call your wife. Do you mean it? Yes, I mean it. You need to calm her down. Well, thank you, Tony. I'll give you five minutes, Dick, and I'll be right here. Sweetheart, it's me. Oh, Dick. Dick, did they get you out? No, no, hang on, honey. I'm still here. I'm still with Tony. Dick, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand what he's doing. Well, what, he's what, very upset, what? honey. He's very upset at how a deal we made with him, how it all started to come apart. I, talk, I talked to Fred Heckman. He said that he'd try and get Tony to let us talk. Yeah, Tony and I both are up. Uh, both are big Fred Heckman fans. He seems to be doing everything he can for the two of us. How's your lung, honey? You feeling okay? You're staying in bed? I don't want you back in surgery. Am I feeling okay? I'm fine, Dick. What about you? How is it all with you? Well, talking to your wife helps. Let me get the kids. No, no, honey, don't. No, it's uh, it's better. Uh, it's better that they don't. <clears throat> Sweetheart, mm -hmm. I love you very much, and I want you to tell the kids I love them very much. Dick, don't. Dick, what's, stop. What's that? Don't say it like that. Please don't say it like that. Like what? Like, you have to make sure I know. Well, you do need to know. You need to know, Shelby. No, you're coming home, Dick. Tell me you're coming home. Shelby, Just I... Just tell me you're coming home. Honey. I want you to do something for me. What? What? It's New Year's Eve. 1960. What are you wearing? What am I wearing? Yeah, what are you wearing? That red dress. Polka dots. It's too cold for that dress. And you wear it anyway. I felt like making an impression. We walk over to the bar to get away from Harry's jokes. And it's the first time we're alone. I'm smoking. <laughs> That's right, you're smoking. And I'm not. But I get you to drink. <laughs> yes, you do. It had been a hard day. Dad had threatened to fire me if I didn't get my act together. That's what you told me. <laughs> and he was mad I didn't stay in the office that night to go over some of the numbers we'd have to deal with in the new year. I remember. But if I had stayed in, I wouldn't have had that moment with you. Where you would find out I don't smoke. And where I would get a drink with you. And stare at you in that red dress. And then we hear it. Look for the silver lining. 
Whenever a cloud appears in the blue, remember somewhere the sun is shining, and so the right thing to do is make it shine for you. A heart full of joy and gladness will always banish sadness and strife. So always look for the silver lining and try to find the sunny side of life. I love you too, Dick. Good night, honey. Good night, Dick. I'll talk to you soon. <clears throat> Thank you, Tony. You're welcome, Dick. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but you ain't going to die tonight. Next time on American Hostage. I want to talk about the interview. I got some questions I want you to ask me. You got a pen and paper? Go ahead, Tony. So question one. Do you regret having killed the prisoner? Feds are coming in. I'm just worried a fed is going to make Tony jumpy. Well, don't worry about that. I'll stay quiet. He won't know I'm there. Who the fuck was that? That was, uh, that was Jim, my producer. You put him on the phone right now. This is Jim. Are you associated with the law enforcement? No, I am not associated with law enforcement. Don't lie, you big piece of shit, motherfucker. Put Fred on the phone right now. Tony, did you kill him? I, I, I need you to answer me now, Tony. Is he alive? The next episode will be out in a week. Or you can binge all eight episodes right now on Amazon Music. Or you can listen ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. American Hostage is an Amazon original and criminal content production. Written by C.D. Carpenter. Directed by Sean Christensen. Produced by Adam Volerich and Brendan Hubbard. Executive produced by John Hamm, Sean Christensen, and Gabriel Mason. Starring John Hamm and Joe Perino. With additional performances by James O'Connor, Christina Brucato, Mara Casson, Brian Wilson, Ryan Willard, Brendan Hubbard. Sound design by Brandon Jones. Composed by Darren Morsey. Editing by Thomas Beach, Sean Christensen, and Adam Volerich. Recording and engineering by Dave Williams. Mixing, mastering, and additional editing by Nick Massidi. ID reads by Natalie Prass. For Amazon Music, executive producers are Morgan Jones and Dave Easton. Senior producer is Eliza Mills. Special thanks to Jacob Bronstein, Phil Sanchez, Chris Davis, Jack Parker, Marcelino Villalpando, Stephanie Walkneen, Vlad Norman, Vanessa Rebert, Sam Petherbridge, Kale Bittner, Alice Zoe, Trevor McNeil, Ty Jacobson, Rich Sherman, Marshall Louie, WIBC, Wish TV, and Creative Artists Agency.